This video is going to be all about lino cut block printing and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create your drawing in your sketchbook. So you will need your linoleum sheet and you will need um, a sketchbook and I like to put my linoleum um, sheet right in the center of my page and then I take a pencil and just quickly outline the edges of my sheet knowing how much space I have for my block print. And now I'm going to fill up that space with a pencil drawing. So my prompt was teeth started with pencil, then I outlined with a thin sharpie all the lines, and then I thought about the negative and positive space, uh, what I wanted ink on versus what I did not. So now I am going to digitally edit my original drawing to use as reference. So I have my original drawing from my sketchbook. Here is the outline for my block print, uh, and then everything in black I'm going to cut out, so that is not going to have ink on it. So I've uploaded my picture to my desktop uh, and now I'm going to go to photopia.com to edit my reference so I can use it to make my block print. I am going to go to file, open, and then find my image from my desktop. Then I hit open. So the first thing that I would like to do uh, is I need to crop my image. So you find the little crop button down on the left and I'm going to change it to fixed ratio with uh, a width of six inches and a height of nine inches because that is correspondent to my linoleum piece. And then you can hit the check mark or you can just click off of it. Then I can click and drag the corners of my bounding box to find uh, the best cropping area that I can use for my reference. So your image might lose some detail, but try to choose the best uh, composition for you and then you can double click or hit the check mark to get your image to crop. Next, I am going to change my picture to black and white and you'll say, well, it's already in black and white, but you're gonna notice that once I click on this, and I don't like to mess with those very much, you can really tell the difference between black and white. It was a little yellow before. Next, I am going to um, invert. So I go to image, invert, so that my picture is opposite in terms of the negative and positive space and then I'm going to transform, meaning I'm going to flip horizontally because every print that we do um, prints backwards. So I want my reference for carving to be backwards. Then I go to File, Export as JPEG, and the first thing I'm going to do is change it to inches to make sure that the width and the height are six by nine inches. And that will be the right size when I print and then I change my quality to 100% so I have the best image uh, at quality for printing. Hit save and then you can print this at your house or you can email it to me but this should be your file and just double check that everything is how you want it to be before you start carving. So now we're going to create a carbon copy on the linoleum from our print. So here's my print versus my original copy. I'm going to put that to the side. I have my linoleum and it fits perfectly on my print just double checking that. I'm going to cut off the excess paper. I don't need all that excess paper in my way as I'm trying to trace, but I want just a little bit on the top so I can fold it over the edge and you're going to see why in a minute. So my, my printed off copy should fit my linoleum. And I leave just a little bit of that border so I can create almost like a hinge with that paper over the edge of the, the linoleum on the back. I'm going to tape that on the back with some masking tape. It is going to be a temporary uh, placement of my image, but I want to make sure it doesn't move so I don't lose my detail. All right, this next part's going to get a little messy. Uh, if you're in class, you're going to use graphite crayons. If you're at home, you can just use a pencil. We are going to rub the graphite, or you could use charcoal if you have it available. We're going to rub it all over the back of the printed image. And what this is going to do is it's going to fill the back of the image with um, graphite that we will transfer to the linoleum plate with a new drawing. So try to get it as even as possible and to fill up most of the white space. It doesn't need to be solid, but it does need to be pretty consistent in how you lay it down. So once I get it how I want it to be, you're going to notice it's very messy and I have fingerprints all over the place. So what I like to do is just erase those so I'm not confusing my fingerprints with the lines that I need for my image. At this point you could wash your hands as well if they're very messy. 
Next, I like to just wipe off all the little eraser shavings or anything I don't need, making sure I have a perfect surface for my carbon copy. I flip my sheet back over, making sure that it's nice and flat and even. Then I take a new piece of tape that I'm just gonna use as a temporary placement while I am tracing my new image. So I'm gonna take a pencil, make sure it's nice and sharp. So I always like to sharpen it first. And then we're gonna go back over to our image and just trace the outlines, making sure to get all the information that we have from the printed image to the linoleum sheet. So you can take off that bottom piece of tape and you'll notice that it is a perfect replica of your printed copy. So I have fast forwarded and this is my pencil carbon copy. So you can see it's a little messy. Um, what I'm going to do next is outline it in Sharpie so I don't lose any of that information. Okay, so the next thing is I like to erase all the parts that I don't need and make sure that my image is exactly how I want it to be. I can then remove the carbon copy and I'm just going to use it next to my uh, image as reference to make sure I'm getting all the lines from the printed copy. So this is after I've put Sharpie everywhere that I need it to be. And now we are going to carve out the uh, images in black. So everything that is black I want to be removed because remember when you print it's going to be the opposite. So I'm using my bench hook stuck on my table. It's going to help me. And this is my carving tool. If you have an opening, generally your blades will be inside of it, and there's six different kinds of blades. Um, you are going to unscrew the top, and you'll notice that uh, it comes entirely off, and there are little pieces inside of it that you're going to slip your blade into. There's the biggest piece, there's the smallest piece, and they connect like that. And you want your uh, edge of your blade to go in between those um, while you have it inside of this top part. It screws on just like that. It's sort of like an X-Acto knife if you've ever changed that blade. So I'm going to choose the different size blade that I want. And I'm going to start with a 1. It is the smallest and it goes all the way up to 6. I always like to start with the smallest knowing that I can get bigger if need be. I'm going to loosen up my blade and then you'll notice that there's a rounded portion of your blade that you want to use first. Um, it might take a little bit of time to sort of wiggle in between and get those to stick. You might need to unscrew all of the pieces uh, and open them up a little bit more, but try to get it tight, try to get it even, tighten it to the best of your ability, just like that and make sure it doesn't wiggle out. Okay, so once I got my blade in, I am going to start carving. Now I wanna carve slow and this video is gonna show a fast <laughs> sped up version but I am eliminating all the black. That's why we color it in black, so it's easy to see what you need to remove versus what you need to keep. And just know that you uh, are carving in the direction of your lines, always carving away from yourself for safety. The bench hook is gonna help your plate stay in place, but you can always move your plate and rotate it to get the best angle for carving. So as you can see, I have a lot of, a lot of lines and it's very tedious to carve all of this, um, but it is worth it. Uh, to get all that nice detail. So I started with the inside image, making sure I get all that black out. Um, and I used a one, so the smallest blade for the entire uh, image on the inside. And you'll notice in the second part of this video, um, I'm going to switch it out right now for a size two. So I don't need to utilize all the different blades, um, but depending on the size of you know your image and how much detail it has, you could utilize all of them. So this is probably the most tasking process, um, and it is possible to um, hurt yourself during this process, so please be careful. The blades are extremely sharp. Always cutting away from yourself, always uh, keeping up with safety. You also don't want to cut all the way through the plate. Um, that is not necessary. You just want to make enough of an indentation um, that all the black has been removed and that it is just a little bit lower um, than the top portion of the plate. It will show up just fine. So don't feel like you have to keep carving till it's super, super deep. The edges are not necessarily a problem either. So this is my finished carving plate. And now I am going to show you how to print with your plate. So I have my plate here. It's nice and clean. Um, I have some printing paper here. I have a large piece of plexiglass, a brayer, a palette knife, 
And then two pieces of equipment we're going to use um, in different ways. I also have my black printing ink available to me, but I'm going to start with black for my test print. So I mix up black and I spread it out the top of my plexiglass. And then I roll it out with my brayer till it's nice and sticky and you can hear that tacky sort of sound um, to make sure that all of it is mixed and the brayer is evenly coated. So once I uh, get my brayer evenly coated and I feel like I have enough, I'm going to roll it over the top of my plate. And this is the best indication of what your image will look like. So you might notice some imperfections here and that's okay. Um, you know, it might show up differently on your piece of paper. It's always nice just to do a test print in black just to make sure you get all those details. So I roll it up and down, side to side, coating all the different levels evenly, spreading out the ink so it's not too much on one side and, and it has an even consistent color as I print. I take a sheet of paper and then I can take um, different tools to rub and press my image. So you can also, if you don't have that, you can take um, the back of a spoon and try to rub it enough to get all even pressure on the back. Obviously I'm going very fast in this video, it's sped up, but circular motions going across the edges, trying to get all that ink distributed evenly on the piece of paper. Then I pull it up very carefully by one edge and there is my image. So I noticed that I didn't have enough ink on there and I really needed some more. My image wasn't as evenly and consistently um, as I wanted it to be. So I take some more ink, spread it out, and I'm not going to clean my plate because I'm working quickly enough that the ink is not necessarily drying. It is possible that if you leave some ink on your plate and then come back to it later and try to put more ink on top, it won't work as effectively as a print. But since I'm working very quickly uh, one right after the other, I feel like if I just add a little bit more black, um, my next print will be even darker um, and more even with the application of ink. So again, going up and down, back and forth, coating it as, as good as I can, taking another sheet of white paper, and rubbing the back of my print. You'll notice that this paper is a little bit smaller than your um, plate as well. Later on in this video, if this is becoming a problem with you spreading too much ink on the back or getting too messy on your hands, you can take a sheet of paper and put it over the top of your printer paper um, or printed paper and that will help those edges from uh, not spreading ink on your hands or on the back of the paper. Much better. Much darker, much, much more consistent. All right, if you're interested in doing more than one color at a time, I'm gonna show you how to do a gradient. So on one side, I chose pink, and on the other side, I chose black, and I keep them just a little bit separate, but then I take my brayer and try to keep it even as I spread this ink down. So it's gonna blend and meet in the middle, but one side will be pink, and the other side will be black. So I might need a little bit more ink this time, uh, just because I wanna make sure that it is evenly applied on my plate. And if you're doing it in a very um, conscious way, a complex way like I am, I want the pink to be on the top and bottom edges of my plate. You know, you wanna make sure that you have enough. So I'm gonna take this sheet, put another piece of paper down, rub the back of the paper, it up and there's my print. So I wanted to add a little bit more and I also wanted to play with a different color piece of paper because I felt like I could get more saturation with the ink. So again I put some more ink down and I go back over the plate with the same colors trying to see uh, you know how I can experiment more with color and saturation and um, background and you can really play with as much complexity with the application of ink as you want to. Um, just know it is possible to add too much ink and it can look um, pretty thick and you lose a lot of detail that way. So, you know, it is a learning process, uh, especially your first time printing. So I'm going to take a neon pink sheet of paper, do the same thing I did before, put down a scrap piece of paper, press my image into the plate, and then pull it up. And this one, I feel like, was my best print of the day. So now, cleaning your workspace, the least uh, fun of this entire video. So I have my plate, I have my plexiglass and my brayer, 
and I don't want my ink to dry on my plate because I want to keep reusing it. So I'm going to go and use some lukewarm or cool water and really scrub as much ink off of the plate as possible. You don't really necessarily need to use soap unless you feel like it has dried and it's harder to get off. Um, I find that you know water is just enough to make sure it's nice and clean. Rubbing it with your fingers to get all those uh, parts on the inside that have ink. You don't want it to be left over if you're doing new uh, prints. And then the most important thing about linoleum is you want it to dry. You don't want it to sit in the water for too long because it could affect the quality of your print. So some paper towel or even um, a cloth towel just to let it dry uh, will be good. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit more. And then for my plexiglass and my brayer, I go under the sink and I just roll it. What this does is it cleans the brayer and the plate at the same time to be more efficient. Um, it is going to come off and you're going to be like, whoa, that's a lot more ink than I thought. Um, but again, going in circles, rubbing your fingers into the plate, trying to get as much of it off as possible, and drying the plexiglass and the brayer. I go on both sides of the plexiglass as well to make sure that I get all the edges and whatnot. So with my brayer too, the most important thing is getting um, the edges and the handle behind the roller um, because that's where ink likes to sit and it could be deceiving because it could not dry and by the time you roll it again there could be hidden ink on there especially if it's black. So make sure that you're drying your brayer as well, giving it a good um, rub with the towel is, is good and then drying it off. So that is my workspace all cleaned up. So here's my series of finished prints on different paper mostly with black but I use some white ink as well. Um, and then there's some gradients too. So this is the expectation for this class, and I hope that you have fun with your own lino printing.